All right, welcome to the Carl Jackson Show, your daily dose of objective truth in a world of confusion and lies. I had a crazy day yesterday, so I was not able to broadcast, but I'm coming to you live, or not live, but at least taped, although I am recording live, if that makes any sense. Uh, this August 20th, 2024, this Tuesday, it's the second night of the DNC. I'm going to recap some of the first night of the DNC, and I'm also going to talk to you about Kamala Harris and ask the question, why does she hate women? Uh, why does she hate women? Or, you know, maybe maybe that's not the question I should ask. Maybe I should just have a statement or make a statement uh, that Kamala Harris has been bad for women. Uh, and so, Carl, how can you say that as a man? Because I can look at data uh, just like a uh, just like a vagina owner can. That's how that's how I can say it. Uh, the the uh, I was going to say the number to call in, but you can't call in. Uh, but please subscribe to the podcast wherever you go to get your podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube and Rumble. Also, I'm on all things social media at the Carl Jackson show. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into this. And I am going to bring you some stats. I had a conversation. I, I, I sat in yesterday, which is why, why I wasn't on uh, last night. But I sat in on Salem News Channel uh, last night or filled in uh, for them. And one of the guests that I had on was a young lady uh, from Turning Point USA. She's a spokesperson uh, for Turning Point USA. Um, and let me uh, let me get her. Oh, man, I don't have her name on. Uh, man. OK, I thought I had her name right in front of me and I, I and I do not. Oh, yes, I do. Caitlin Sinclair uh, is her name. And anyway, we had a fascinating conversation on Salem News Channel tonight, but I'm going to elaborate on some of the things that we talked about, because there is a bit of concern uh, when it comes to female voters. Um, uh, the the only numbers that have shifted somewhat. Uh, that have been somewhat meaningful and substantive as far as the polls are concerned uh, concerned are with women. Uh, so Trump, the numbers are pretty much the same or where they would have been uh, were Biden, uh, if Biden had stayed in the race, it seems to me. Uh, but uh, but when it comes to women, uh, Kamala Harris, at least for now, has surged ahead of Donald Trump, at least in some polling that I've that I uh, that I saw. And I cited for you guys last week. Forgive me. Uh, I've just had a crazy week, so I forget the poll um, and uh, I'm not going to go back right now. Uh, but that that was confirmed by uh, by Caitlin Sinclair of Turning Point USA, and she's a spokesperson for them. And she admitted that on the ground and in college campuses, and she's on the ground actually for the DNC in Chicago. Uh, and she admitted that there has been a boost of enthusiasm that she's personally witnessed that has taken her uh, aback over Kamala Harris amongst women, where a lot of women, liberal women, Democratic women, seem to be willing to sit it out uh, when Joe Biden was at the top of the ticket. And she, she, she said... You know, I, I have to admit um, that I've seen a shift and there's a lot of women that are voting, not necessarily for substance. You know, some women on the abortion issue, but a lot of it is just uh, women that are just emotional over Kamala Harris. Uh, this could be, you know, first woman and it's all joy and it's all the vibe. Uh, and she admitted that it's a problem uh, because a lot of these liberal women, they're not even it's not even about substance. It's not even necessarily about an issue as much as it is as it is womanhood and feeling good. Uh, and she said uh, that's what she's seen. And I'm paraphrasing. Those aren't her words exactly. Uh, but I want to give it get into some of the numbers, how Kamala Harris has actually been bad uh, for women and make sure that you share this with your friends and neighbors. But I do want to go back and I want to roll some uh, some clips that we have. I want to start with actually Right off the bat, this is night one of the DNC. Tonight is the second night of the DNC. You're going to have, I think it's Barack Obama is going to be one of the headline speakers. If I'm not mistaken, I'll go check the headlines. I'm sorry, guys. It's just been so insane. I should already know this. And I do. I actually read it much earlier. Uh, but I don't I don't give a flip about the Democrats except beating them. But I have been paying attention to this uh, somewhat just because I want to know who's speaking. And I must admit I must I got to admit, I, I watched it last night. I watched a lot of it last night and it was a complete demonic um, abortion fest. And I know there's some people out there, even on the right, that are uh, that are pro choice. Uh, but what we saw yesterday was a straight up. I, 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 I don't even know how to uh, describe it, except to say that it was straight up like a celebration of killing babies. And And quite frankly, when they panned over to Kamala Harris, it seemed to be the only time where she really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it. It was the most satanic thing or one of the most satanic things that I've 
that I've ever seen. And I'm not sure that Republicans are braced for this because I don't think we're just living in political times. I think this is a serious a spiritual battle. Uh, but for the sake of the uh, but for the sake of the election season, uh, we are going to obviously address this, uh, address this politically right now. But I do want to play, <laughs> I do want to play a video clip for you. And I want to start off with this and we'll play a couple of video clips of uh, Joe Biden. And before I do, we're going to be going to video clip number 39 uh, uh, first. Actually, Gabe, I said 38, but I think I want to go to 39 first. And it's uh, Scott Jennings actually he tweeted about this, how Biden is uh, is known in his career as being one of the best eulogy givers at funerals. But now he apparently made his own eulogy. And guys, I got to tell you, uh, Dark Brandon showed up last night and that was a disaster. And I tweeted out and I I could say X. I just don't know what to say except post it. That just doesn't that just doesn't pop. Uh, so I tweeted out yesterday on um, tweeted out yesterday on X, basically, uh, that, uh, you know, Dark Brandon. Uh, had had uh, had shown up again, and and he he, uh, he definitely had. And I also tweeted, although I don't condone the coup, I certainly understand it. The guy was a major disaster, and having seen him at the DNC, they pushed that fool back to eleven thirty. I thought it was going to be midnight. I mean, they went from I thought I was I thought I was hearing nine, then ten, ten thirty, and they brought all of these irrelevant speakers on in front of Joe Biden and some to lead up to Joe Biden. And I'm like, no, all you needed to do, you could have brought his daughter out. Ashley Biden came out, talked about her fond memories of with her dad. No, she didn't talk about the uh, showers with her dad, uh, but uh, you know, gave him all of these accolades. They could have left it there, uh, but they brought up all like Senator uh, Coons and all this, uh, just totally unnecessary. Uh, Senator Raphael Warnock again. Uh, unnecessary. A lot of ad hominem attacks laid at President Trump, former President Trump, that were that were laid out. But I want to give you the ultimate take. I believe that most or the way that most people saw it last night uh, went after Joe Biden spoke. And again, and we'll play you some excerpts of this. And and I also again, I want to delve into why Kamala Harris is bad for women. But listen to this clip. This is clip 39 CNN. Um, the panelists that are speaking about Joe Biden's speech. Let's go ahead and roll it. Por favor, Gabe. Biden is known in his career as being one of the best eulogy givers at funerals. And now they're making him come and give his own career. He, he has files of every eulogy. Yeah. He's, he's and and now they're making him give his own eulogy at this uh, convention. I mean, it <laughs> yeah, like it's it. best that you get to give your own. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, I, I am anxious to see how they handle it. it's a sticky wicket i mean he was bullied out of this race after 52 years of service to the democratic party and it wasn't all about his age he was unpopular he was going to lose it was afghanistan it was inflation it was immigration and now uh, and he had to be dragged out by the fingernails i'm sorry this is yeah. not so he's not here in a happy yeah. moment okay we'll, i know we'll see. We'll this, see. this yarn that's being spun in this hall that he was popular and selfless and handing on, no, 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 it is the opposite, and everybody knows it, and yet the Democrats are engaging in this this theater of looking into cameras and saying it, so it's not true. I'm interested to see how they handle it tonight, but also moving forward, because what the Republicans will do is say, look, this was Joe Biden's loyal lieutenant, the last person in the room on Afghanistan, helped him on immigration, which you hate, now all of a sudden proposing to do something about inflation when she hasn't for three and a half years. She will be stuck to him for the election. And will the voters buy that she had nothing to do with any of it? Uh, the question. I hope CNN pays that guy a buttload of money to stay. And I hope that he never loses his chops. Scott Jennings, if I'm not mistaken, he used to work for the Trump administration. Was he even? I'm not sure if he was ever. Anyway. Uh, definitely a Republican and definitely, definitely hardcore, at least uh, in his speaking. And I hope that they keep him. If CNN wanted to survive, they would keep people around like him with real uh, with real uh, opinions. And I, I and notice in that video, uh, something that I think is very important. You you can you know, when somebody has hit a nerve, especially politically speaking, all you have to do is look at Dan Jones. And when Scott Jennings said that Biden just get uh, that Biden had just given his own eulogy. Right. Um, you you saw Van Jones just just kind of laugh, just smirk. He knew it was true. And he knew the way that Scott Jennings framed it was absolutely perfect. Biden gave his own eulogy. I mean, I looked at that speech last night and I was almost like, 
Okay, I'm I'm totally against the coup. That was wrong. That's not democratic. You just X'd out 14 million people. And then I listened to him speak again. The dark Brandon came out. The the North Carolina hoax, the same old, same old. And for those of you that know anybody with dementia, you know, they repeat the same stuff over and over again. I don't know if somebody allowed him to uh, to speak that speech or write that speech because they were just like, ah, let him say what he wants to say. He says the same crap all the time. Anyway, you know, I almost feel like that's what happened. And he was just angry. He was divisive. It was weird. It was almost as if he was trying to. Um, trying to uh, uh or or, or uh, what, what's what's the word that I'm looking for? Searching for here. It's almost as if he was trying to get another assassination <laughs> attempt on Trump going. It was insane. Uh, they also spoke to Nancy Pelosi. Uh, Jake Tapper did, uh, and Dana Bash. Uh, while she was there, this is this is uh this is her take. They questioned her on as um as to whether or not she had spoken to joe biden here's what nancy pelosi had to say in cut 38 gate please you know what how do you talk I to him is my only what i have to do right he made the decision for the country my concern was not about the president it was about his campaign okay that is that is so all right so nancy pelosi's trying to run away from it her concern wasn't about the presidency what about the campaign? OK, they're they're one in the same. They're synonymous. She was concerned that he was going to lose the presidency because his campaign sucked and because the guy has dementia. And so she uh, and Kamala Harris don't think for a second Kamala Harris didn't play a part in this. She, Kamala Harris, uh, Barack Obama, although it appears to be that Nancy could, uh, Nancy Pelosi or it sounds like she carried the biggest uh, dagger. But na- uh, make no mistake about it. Uh, she wanted him out. She thought that Kamala Harris, actually, she didn't think that Kamala Harris gave them a better chance of winning. They actually wanted an open primary. It was Joe Biden, if you recall, from the reporting. It was Joe Biden uh, that said he didn't want an open primary. And that may have been one of the conditions of him, um, you know, leaving the race because he decided to endorse Kamala Harris uh, right from the right from the get go. And if you recall, Barack Obama had said it was written that uh, or reported that Barack Obama had said he didn't know that if she if she could step in even in Joe Biden's shoes and handle all of the things coming at her, um, even though that was, you know, it, even though he was he was fond of her, uh, he didn't know that she could handle the political whirlwinds that would come her way. And I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what Barack Obama said. It was absolutely, absolutely insane. Uh, So we'll play some clips from Joe Biden shortly. But before we do, guys, I want to talk to you about Priority Gold, uh, because if Kamala Harris gets in, you better want you're going to want to make sure that you invest. So Priority Gold, economists have warned that massive tax hike could devastate your your IRA. And we know that Kamala Harris is going to do that and your 401k account as the stock market braces for impact. With inflation on the rise and global uncertainty looming, it's clear why central banks and savvy Americans are turning to gold in times like this. Proverbs 2120 reminds us to preserve what we built. Right now, that wisdom points us towards gold. If you haven't had your eye on gold, time to make it a priority. My name is Carl Jackson, and I'm urging you to call my friends at Priority Gold to find out how they can help you diversify your savings with both physical gold and silver. You can call the number 1-800-405-GOLD, 1-800-405-GOLD, or visit PriorityGold.com slash Golden for a free gold info guide. Plus, see if you qualify for free shipping and storage. Act now to get your portfolio working for you while the market is golden. Again, call 1-800-405-GOLD to speak with a gold specialist or visit PriorityGold.com slash Golden. Again, PriorityGold.com slash Golden or give them a call at 1-800-405-GOLD. Okay, so there's a, uh, yeah, Kamala Harris is going to be an economic disaster. She unleashed more of her plan. I'll talk to that in in another, uh, uh, about it in another podcast. Uh, But she added to her horrific economic plan uh, that she unleashed last week or last Friday. Uh, Now she wants to raise uh, the uh, corporate taxes as well. And let me tell you something. I don't have a love for a bunch of these left wing coop corporations, but the bottom line is they provide jobs. They keep the economy going and it's their employees that go out and buy services, buy products. Uh, and that helps the economy. That helps the economy boom. You know, when 
uh, when, when you have workers going out or employees going out and buying and you have business owners that are investing, they're buying stuff, perhaps at a higher level, different pay grades, but everybody's buying, everybody's consuming. Some people are hiring and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, the, uh, the economy works better. And so Kamala Harris wants to put a wrench in that as well. Uh, she is absolutely an economic illiterate. She is an extremist and she doesn't know what she's doing when it comes to the economy. All right. And she's bad for women. She has been bad for women. And so I'm going to go back and forth with that. I'm also going to get into uh, Joe Biden here again. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you go to get your podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube and Rumble. And again, find me on again. Please find me on all things social media at the Carl Jackson show. Let me opine on this real quick, because I, I heard some people asking. Uh, so uh, Barack Obama, where is it at? Barack Obama is going to be one of the speakers tonight. I believe Michelle Obama is set to make an appearance, um, is set to make an appearance as well. Let's see, Biden passes torch to Harris. I'm just reading some of the uh, some of the headlines from the uh, from the real clear politics. A president was pushed out of prime time. Honestly, that that told you everything you needed to know. They didn't want that fool to be seen. They kept bringing, I mean, Raphael, why the heck would you have Raphael Warnock? Why do you need Senator Chris Coons? Just give Biden his time and let him speak. You could have had one of his family members introduce him. Jill introduced him. That was fine. Uh, you know, we've got a clip from her, but Jill introduced him. That was fine. They all have to play the role. Um, but it, it, it was it was an absolute joke. And they kept pushing him. First off, he's the president of the United States and he's on the first night of the DNC. You know what the first night is? It's the throwaways as the, the way that I've heard it explained from political insiders is this is when you get all of the uh, the the hardcore base kind of out of the way. The people you just want to get out the way. They threw Joe Biden on and they threw him on at 1130 at night when people were asleep. All right. <laughs> at least on the East Coast. Like an idiot, I stayed up and watched it uh, because I wanted to see what was going to be his last relevant speech as a president. And he failed miserably. It was the same old, the same old dark Brandon type, dark, divisive, angry, mad Joe Biden, because it's all he knows how to be with a little bit of gratitude to his wife sprinkled in, you know, a, you know, a gracious moment. Uh, with his daughter, a nice moment, you know, even though you know, we've got our issues there. Right. Uh, but even though there was a nice moment where he hugged his daughter, wiped some tears from his eyes uh, as he was realizing that his presidency was gone uh, in 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 my opinion. Uh, just absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy times. But it is Obama and Imhoff. That is Kamala Harris, his husband, uh, that are going to speak tonight. Now, why would you have Obama speak on a Tuesday night as opposed to a Wednesday night? Apparently, Bill Clinton is going to be speaking on a Wednesday night. Now, Bill Clinton is a great speech giver. Don't get me wrong. And Bill Clinton, for Democrats, they believe he was a good president. Um, and he went ahead and triangulated uh, with the help of Dick Morris. And, you know, it basically took credit for a lot of the work that Newt Gingrich had done, uh, even though they worked together to bring forth the balanced budget. And so but nonetheless, people still love Bill Clinton. But you would think that Barack Obama would speak on a Wednesday. Now, here's my theory. Here's my theory. Let me just share this. I believe that Barack Obama is slated to speak on Tuesday as opposed to Wednesday, because everybody has been or many people on the left will compare Barack Obama to Kamala Harris. And I think if the nights are too close together and they see Barack Obama's skill compared to Kamala Harris's skill, they could lose that narrative. Everyone knows that Barack Obama, even though he read a teleprompter a lot and he was the teleprompter king, um, he could at times at least sound smart and intelligent and intellectual away from a teleprompter. But he it was hard for him to hide his leftism. Off of a teleprompter, Kamala Harris won't be able to hide her left uh, leftism off of a teleprompter. She's not a, she's not intellectual, so her answers won't sound great. Uh, and so they've got to keep her on a teleprompter. Her voice is kind of nasally. Everybody knows that she's not a likable person. She's going to have to pull that off. Say what you will about Barack Obama, but he comes off as a smooth operator. Uh, you got to give him credit. So I don't think they want the comparison so close to, uh, you know, one night after the other, because it'll be hard to compare her to the second coming of Barack Obama, because she simply is not uh, the effeminate Imhoff that is her husband. He'll be speaking as well. Uh, this is a man I'm assuming that Kamala Harris wears the pants in that family. And uh, yeah, I do mean that as a dig. I mean, I, I don't 
don't like that guy. <laughs> he he just comes across as fake to me. The same with Tim Walls. Oh, oh. And then we found out Tim Walls, her her BP pick. Um, he lied about another thing. He claimed that his wife, he was out tweeting back in February uh, that he was so mad about the Republicans and even in vitro fertilization and vitro fertilization and their stance on that. Um, why are they against it and all this kind of stuff when actually most Republican states, if not all, voted to save it, regardless of how you feel about it. They did. I do believe that Republicans are weak. <laughs> and so they 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 kowtow to the masses. Uh, they don't have a lot of principle. And so that's what they stood for. They actually went even further on the issue of in vitro fertilization in many cases. But Tim Walz wanted to tweet out anyway because he wanted to make it a political issue. And come to find out, uh, you know, he said that he had his children. It was a personal issue to him because he and his wife had their children uh, by by way of in vitro fertilization. Come to find out he lied. He had it through IUI. I forget what that stands for. But basically, you take some sperm, you you put it into the fallop, uh, fallopian tube. Uh, so that it can meet up with the uh, with the egg. Uh, but it's obviously not it's done medically as opposed to done sexually. Right. Uh, and so that's what they did. All right. Uh, but he wanted to make sure that he used that. So the guy lied about his service or his retirement status, still lying about it. Uh, they lied about it in the DNC last night and he lied about that. So I just threw that one in for uh, threw that one in for for fun. All right. Real quickly, let me talk to you about why Kamala Harris uh, is um, is bad for women. Uh, and uh, she has been bad for for women, period. So <clears throat> this was a column and I thought it was well written. Uh, and this circles back to the point that I was making. About some of the things that Caitlin uh, that Caitlin from uh, from from Turning Point USA had mentioned. Uh, and she said candidly and she was like, dude, I hope this doesn't get me uh, canceled. But I got to say that it's one of the concerns that I have with women and so many uh, women that are voting, especially on, on, on the left, there's just so much emotion. And it wasn't even just abortion. It's just, it, I, it, it, there's a lot of emotion there. And they'll vote for, I mean, just totally uninformed, but there's this vibe, there's this enthusiasm. So they're all in for Kamala. And she said she has to admit she is seeing that both on college campuses. And while she, is in, uh, she was in Chicago last night, I'm not sure if she still is, but I assume that she is. Um, she out on the street questioning people. That was it was overwhelming that a lot of women uh, were not going to vote and young women and older women alike weren't going to vote for Biden, even though they were liberal. But now they're going to vote for uh, for Kamala Harris. And their reasons weren't good. She mentioned some of them and I forget, but they were very uh, they were very elementary. Uh, they weren't very substantive. They were, uh, you know, it, it was just, uh, you know, feel good. It was one of those feel good things. Uh, so anyway, but. Here's some numbers that I want to throw at you. At least Stefanik wrote about this, and I think it's very, very important. I'm trying to drink, and I have the cap. <laughs> you may have caught that. See, if you subscribe to YouTube, if you subscribe to my Rumble. Also, please subscribe to Rumble. There's going to be things that we're going to have to talk about. You're not going to be able to hear on YouTube. I want to make sure that I'm growing that Rumble channel, too. So please, please, please make sure you subscribe to our Rumble channel for favor. All right? I would really, really, really uh, appreciate that. And then all things social media, X, Instagram, Facebook, True Social Getter, wherever I am on social media, The Carl Jackson Show uh, is where you can go to find me. But I want to de deliver some numbers after I take a swig here. <clears throat> all right. But there was an article pinned by Elise Stefani, Congresswoman uh, on RCP. Numbers don't lie. Women thrived under Trump. Uh, and they suffered under Harris. So I just want to put this into perspective. And I think this is wise. And listen, uh, this is something that Republicans are going to have to learn how to frame properly. And I really think that Republicans made a mistake uh, by backing away so strongly from the abortion issue because the left is going to tag you with it anyway. You're dealing with extremists. That's what we saw on night one of the DNC. You're not going to be able to run from it. Uh, uh, the Democrats are going to tie even even if you say you're pro choice, it doesn't matter. Look at what the Republican Party has done to try to run away from abortion. And they're still being tagged with it. You had a full night of DNC that was just about baby killing uh, for the most most part and sending this senile Joe Biden off. That's what it was about. Uh, night one. I mean, crazy. It was crazy. Filled with uh, will filled with abortion. So it would be nice to have an opposing party that stands for life. We no, no longer have that. 
I still believe the better option is Trump because I believe that we live to fight another day. I believe that we can turn some things around or at least stop the sink from shipping. Uh, stop, stop, stop the sink from shipping. Stop. The, I meant to say stop the ship from sinking, obviously. And I'm hoping that if Trump gets in, we can advance some things. Uh, I just don't think it's going to be as easy as many people assume. But we need to get out and vote. I, I went out and voted today. It was our primaries here in Florida. And I got to tell you, um, I'm just I'm just being real. I, I hope that the numbers show something different. I'm going to look later on, on the Chiron across Fox News. So I'm hoping that the numbers will show something different. Um, but I was thoroughly unimpressed by the turnout that I saw, at least when uh, when I voted this morning. I, I expected to see a little more uh, get up and go. And uh, I didn't see that. Um, I, I I just didn't see that. And and so I'm I'm hoping maybe it was just the time that I was there, uh, but I've been at uh, I've been at that place and other places during primary season, and I even during primary season, even though the numbers are are lower, um, but I'm talking to ghost town, and I was uh, I was really taken aback by that. I mean, uh, so hopefully we'll have to wait and see what happens, uh, but that means that every vote is going to count. Every voter needs to get out. All right. Now, let's go here real quick. All right. So numbers don't lie. Women thrived under Trump. So I just want to share you share share this column with you because I think it's very important. I think it's important that you share this and rewind, remind some women of this that might be in your life that might be doubting um, or wondering if their life would be better under a Kamala Harris. And all you have to do is ask them for one. Well, how is it now? Because she's the vice president. And no, she doesn't get to run away from the Biden-Harris ticket. They're one and the same. Susan Rice, who worked in the Biden administration, even said as much. She said that uh, Kamala Harris, she working in the White House for two years, was integral in the policy decisions that Joe Biden made. We may not have seen that outside of the White House, but behind the walls, Susan Rice admitted that Kamala Harris was an integral part of the policies that were developed and implemented behind the scenes. All right, so of the countless slides, Elise Stefanik writes about Kamala Harris, that Kamala Harris perpetrated uh, um, by Democrats uh, and, and the mainstream media, uh, she says, are of the countless lies. One of the most egregious is that a Kamala Harris presidency will deliver historic economic opportunity for working women. Uh, but unfortunately, that simply isn't the case because we have available data and the numbers tell the exact opposite story. Uh, both Harris and Biden saddled women with the largest, listen to this, with the largest pay cut, the largest inflation crisis, tax hike and economic crash so far this century. And obviously, listen, this century is still uh, still in its infancy stage, if you will. Uh, not quite. We're almost a quarter of a century in. But listen, the largest pay cut, inflation crisis, tax hike, and economic crash so far this century, whereas Trump delivered the greatest economic boost for American women of any modern day president. So the median income for women increased every year during Trump's administration. It reached the highest on record in 2020. So the median income, again, for women increased every year during Trump's administration. Real average weekly earnings increased by 8.2% under Trump. They decreased 3.9% uh, under Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. So real average weekly earnings increased 8.2% under Trump. They decreased nearly 4% under Harris and Biden. Just think about that. So your paycheck, imagine, a, imagine getting an 8.2% raise weekly. Weekly. That's what you had under former President Trump. Right away, Biden and Harris come in and they just start every Trump policy that they could undo. They started doing it immediately. The unemployment rate for women overall uh, and for black women especially reached a record low during Trump's administration in 2019. The workforce participation gap between men and women shrank to the narrowest in history. That's unbelievable. So his history, his economy, Trump's economy made history with the most women in the workforce ever. 
that's one I got it. I admit I did not know. I did not realize. But she claims this wasn't by accident. He understood that working women are also balancing families. Obviously, he could see his, uh, you know, his daughter, um, Ivanka and his sons. And he delivered a pro-family economic agenda that included doubling the child tax credit from one thousand to two thousand dollars per child and expanding eligibility. So you guys may recall that just recently, Kamala Harris, uh, she didn't just steal uh, uh, Maduro's ideas. She didn't just steal Trump's no tax, no tips ideas, but she also stole the uh, the child tax credit, $6,000 child tax credit. Uh, just a few days prior, J.D. Vance had said on a Sunday talk show uh, that the Trump Vance ticket w- would be proposing a $5,000 child tax credit. Now, Kamala, Kamala Harris is for abortion big time. She's for abortion all the way up until birth. Uh, So for her to issue a child tax credit, you know, she was just trying to take the idea uh, because she wants to continue to gain that female vote, including those working women or those family women. Uh, Maybe stay at home or maybe you're uh, maybe you're doing both. Maybe you're working, you know, from uh, working and uh, and also taking care uh, of your family. Uh, Kamala Harris is trying to straddle the fence and don't and don't fall for it because the problems that you're feeling. Kamala Harris has been in office three and a half years. Nearly 40 million families received an average benefit of two thousand dollars or twenty two hundred dollars under Trump's leadership, uh, totaling credits of approximately eighty eight billion nationally. And then he created the first ever paid family leave tax credit. Now, I got to be honest with you. I don't believe the federal government should do that. Um, I believe that's kind of taking a Democrat idea. That's more big government, in my opinion. So I'm not a fan of it. Nonetheless, uh, he did it and some voters liked it. All right. Or many voters did. So he uh, he created the first ever paid family leave tax credit for employees earning 72 grand or less. Signed that into law 12 weeks um, um, into law, 12 weeks of paid parental leave for federal workers. He also signed the largest ever increase in child care and development block grants. Uh, expanding access to quality, affordable child care for more than 800,000 low income families. And if that's that's honestly, that's the way to do it, even though I don't agree that the federal government should be involved per se in child care. But if you're going to do something like that, block grants to the states are the best way to do it. And then the states decide how to um, how to use that money. So these are some of the things that we we so quickly forgotten uh, under Trump's presidency but also how Kamala Harris has been bad for women. Trump also signed into law provision that enabled new parents to withdraw up to $5,000 from their retirement account. I remember that without penalty when they gave birth to or adopted a child. All right. Um, she or she poses this question. And I think it's a um, I think it's a decent one. Uh, can women have it all? She says the oft asked question about balancing work and family life is can women have it all under uh, under President Trump's leadership? Uh, the answer was a resounding yes. Now, uh, my counselor, I'll say, said, uh, listen, uh, it, 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 the, the better question is, can women have it all at once? And sometimes that answer is is no. Um, and so conservative women can say that, too. Sometimes, you know, the priority can be family. The priority can be kids. But it isn't to say that you can't go back to work at a, cer- a certain time uh, to do the things uh, that you believe you have talent uh, to do and make some more uh, make some more money. It's just left wing women have gotten it flipped. And it seems like. Conservative women, oftentimes, sadly, uh, as we do, we, we 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 follow. We follow the leader and the left isn't afraid to win and to change the narrative. But nonetheless, uh, President Trump made it possible so that women could have kind of the best of both worlds, if you will, because if you're making more money, you know, perhaps you can afford that child care or, you know, or perhaps if one spouse is making more, another spouse doesn't have to work as, uh, you know, as long as hours or, or what have you. Uh, so it's kind of a win win situation. Um, so anyway, she also says Biden and Harris failed economic policies hurt every American, but it hit women the hardest. Uh, and women are bearing the brunt of Kamala, Har- uh, Kamala Harris's tie-breaking vote uh, named the Inflation Reduction Act. Guys, remember that. She was the tie-breaking vote. And actually, Joe Biden, and I'm sure they're glad a lot of people missed it, tied her to that yesterday. I don't know if he did that intentionally or if he just wanted to make sure he endorsed her, that he was gonna, she was going to continue with his plans. Uh, but remember, he tied her to it last night. 
basically said, hey, he 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 reminded people that she was the deciding vote on the Inflation Reduction Act, which actually sent government spending skyrocketing. It turbocharged inflation, as Elise Stefanik writes, uh, and it made inflation worse all around. Uh, under Kamala Harris, when she was sworn in as vice president, or since the time she's been sworn in as vice president, listen to this. Prices have risen on average 19.4%. 19.4%. Now, this is this is increasingly difficult for women. Why? Because women, as she points out, are the majority of grocery shoppers and grocery bills have skyrocketed, forcing many Americans to come back on essentials. She names a couple examples. And you guys know this. Listen, on occasion, I go to the grocery store when I do. Well, you always see the vast majority of women or if it's some dude, you know, he's coming in and out real quick and he's grabbing a few things and uh, you see that often, but the vast majority of grocery shoppers, when you go, it's going to be women. Examples, she says, a, a single mother of two in Nevada had to sell her car to afford groceries under Biden Harris. Also, a mother of two in Michigan had to think about putting, and this is a quote from this woman, quote, had to think about putting gasoline prices before buying my kids clothes, close quote, because of Kamala Harris's tie-breaking vote for Biden's radical green agenda. So families now need, listen to this. Families now need $12,590 annually just to maintain the same standard of living they enjoyed under Trump just three years ago. According to Congress's Joint Economic Committee, the 67 percent of parents say inflation has impacted their ability to pay for their children's education. School supplies and extracurricular activities this past uh, uh, school year, the cost of child care has increased 32 percent. Uh, since 2019, nearly two thirds are spending 20 percent or more of their annual income on child care. The average price for a pack of disposable diapers has increased 32 percent. Since Trump left office, 47 percent of families reported struggling to afford diapers in 2022. Biden and Harris um, created the baby formula shortage. You guys remember that? Some of you mothers out there might remember. It. Don't forget this stuff. When they were locking us down and they hired Pete Booty to be the transportation secretary, who's been a total disaster at the job. And that caused the price to soar uh, to an all time high. Forty four million people were living in food uh, insecure households in 2022. That's a 31 percent increase and the largest one year increase since 2008. So make no mistake about it. Women were worse or women are worse off under Kamala Harris. And don't forget that she's been an integral part of the Joe Biden or the Biden Harris administration. And they want you for, to forget it. Don't let them uh, forget it. And I don't want you to forget what a disaster Joe Biden was either. So let's play a couple of clips uh, just to remind you what a disaster this guy is. All right, let's uh, go to this. This is clip number 28. Por favor, Gabe. Kamala and I are committed to strengthening legal immigration. Whoa. Kamala and I are committed to strengthening illegal immigration. The dementia patient said the quiet part out loud. And look at the anger and the vigor. He means it. We're committed to it. And they are. Don't think for a second they weren't trying to bring in more perpetual Democrat voters by opening up the border. So he admits it. Joe Biden says the quiet part out loud. And Kamala Harris wants to continue that. Again, Susan Rice says that Kamala Harris was an integral part of the policymaking decisions in the White House. She served in Barack Obama's White House. She served in Biden's White House, I believe, for the first two years. And she said this notion, she that those were her words, this notion that Kamala Harris is somewhat, you know, or somehow divorced from Biden's policies are just nonsense. I mean, I'm paraphrasing that last part, but that's basically what she said. This is what Joe Biden said about democracy. This is clip number 29. He says democracy has prevailed and democracy has delivered. It's delivered a bunch of crap. But let's go ahead and roll it. Por favor, Gabe, number 29. I stand before you now on this August night to report that democracy has prevailed. <laughs> democracy. Democracy has delivered. And now democracy must be preserved. Man, 
That was his audition to get another assassination attempt going for Trump. Uh, does anybody know what he means by that? Democracy has prevailed. Democracy has de- uh, uh, has delivered. All right. Democracy must be preserved. If you ask any one of those people funding uh, those seals in the audience, I guarantee you uh, they couldn't tell you what the heck that means. I guarantee you they would fumble all over the place. What do you mean by democracy? Do we live in a democracy? No, we live in a democratic republic. I guarantee you they could not understand or they would not know what the heck Joe Biden, um, what the heck Joe Biden was saying. I mean, just an absolute, complete and utter disaster. Um, Nancy Pelosi awkwardly chants, we love Joe, weeks after leading the coup <laughs> to backstab him. Uh, that's one. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, a moment was uh this is this is more hillary clinton chanting locker up i don't know that maybe we'll save that clip for later but that's all the left has all that's all listen all they want to do is make you hate trump enough to be distracted from the pol- their policies that are hurting your household uh so we'll perhaps we'll save that for another day AOC, these are video clips that I have. And again, we're running into this DNC convention all week. This is the second night, but I wanted to go over the first night. Uh, may have to double up on some podcasts here uh, that I need to share. Oh, by the way, speaking of double up, before I get out of here, I want to make sure that I give you guys the opportunity uh, to double your money and double your rest. All right. So you've asked in my pillow. Listen, there's finally they're finally bringing you the most requested offer ever right now. You can get the queen size premium my pillow for just nineteen ninety eight. My pillow is made with patented adjustable feel. Uh, it adjusts to your exact individual needs regardless of your sleep position. It helps keep your neck aligned and holds its shape all night long, so you get the best sleep of your life. Uh, but that's not all. Get their six piece kitchen or bath towel set for only twenty five bucks. The brand new mattress topper for as low as sixty nine ninety eight, and their famous my pillow bed sheets. For as low as $25 and so much more, go to MyPillow.com or give them a call at 800-858-0263, 800-858-0263. Use the promo code CARL to get huge discounts on all MyPillow products, including including the premium queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. That's the lowest price ever. Don't delay. Order today. Use promo code CARL, C-A-R-L. I don't spell it like the communists. And let me talk to you about wealth protection research uh, just because they are working to try to uh, restore your uh, restore your wealth. And given Kamala Harris's uh, economic plan uh, to literally spend, that's one thing people aren't talking about. And I'm going to talk about that in an upcoming podcast. But what she's threatening to spend an additional nearly $2 trillion in deficit spending annually with her economic plan. Guys, that's inflation. All right. Uh, everybody's talking about um, everybody's talking about the, the 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 price gouging stuff. And that's complete and utter nonsense. I'll go over some of that with you later. Uh, and I have already, but I'll give you some more details uh, a little later this week. But man, her spending one point seven trillion dollars at least in additional deficit spending. We're in we're struggling with inflation now. She wants to spend an additional one point seven trillion dollars a year. Guys, uh, that isn't good. That isn't good. That isn't going to help us at all. And that's why I'm talking to you about wealth protection research with the volatility from this election and our national debt just breaking thirty five trillion for the first time ever. uh, There has never been a better time than now to consider physical gold or silver as a way to protect your savings. I'm concerned that if this election goes sideways, things are going to get even worse. And I know you are too. The good news is there is something you can do now ahead of whatever future chaos might be coming. That's where wealth protection research comes in. Um, So they found a gold partner in Sasco Gold that specializes in helping everyday Americans protect their retirement accounts like their 401ks, IRAs, or TSPs using a loophole that allows them to convert to convert into physical gold or silver, uh, uh, gold or silver tax and penalty free. All you have to do is text the word truth to seven six six two six to learn more. Uh, that's right. You can break free from your captive retirement account and enjoy the peace of mind knowing your retirement savings is now stored in physical gold and silver uh, that you can control. If you are interested. Um, in learning the truth about how you can protect your retirement with gold and silver, you can get a free gold investment kit that explains it all from Sasco Gold just by texting TRUTH 
to 76626. Again, um, truth to 76626. Drew from Sasko is standing by waiting to help my listeners. All you have to do is text the word truth to 76626 and tell Drew that Carl sent you. All right. And then for your free gold investment kit, again, text the word truth to 76626 is the number uh, is the number that you can text. All right. So those were a couple of clips of, of Joe Biden. Perhaps we'll have some of I wanted to get more of Jill anyway. We'll have. We'll have a lot more for you tomorrow. It's been a crazy uh, day. And again, I was in on SNC tonight, yesterday, so I did not podcast. But we will be making that up to you. Uh, but please make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you go to get your podcast. Again, please follow me on all things social media at the Carl Jackson Show. And until next time, don't grow weary doing good. And don't forget to share this podcast, please. Share it, like it, subscribe, share it far and wide, especially when it comes to women. Women need to know and need to be reminded how they were able to thrive under Trump's presidency and how they're not able to do so under the Biden-Harris uh, ticket that we're seeing right now. And it won't get better with her. All right. It just will not. All right, guys, until next time, don't grow weary doing good. As the shirt says, Carl Jackson Merch dot item order dot com. Carl Jackson Merch dot item order dot com. Until next time, don't grow weary doing good. God bless you.